I'm going to begin my 18 minutes under this incredible TEDx spotlight with a quote. The quote is, we are not human beings seeking a spiritual existence. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Think about it. Because when I heard this quote, for me, in my life, everything changed. We have so much of fear within us. We fear loss, whether it's financial, whether it's professional, whether it's personal. We fear death. We fear pain. There's so much of fear within us at all points of time. And when you see things in perspective and say, it's just a human experience and we all need to go through it, you see it so differently. The voltage, the charge that it carries just, just disappears. You see your life in perspective. Everything changes around you. It's like you're riding this incredible wave, but instead of being crushed under the wave, you're riding it. The closest analogy I can give you is that perhaps of being on a roller coaster. When you're on a roller coaster, you take your seatbelt, you strap it on, and you get ready for this ride. Exactly the same way as you do with the journey of life. You buckle yourself in and say, that's it. And then your roller coaster begins, and there are these lovely twists and turns, and everyone's laughing and clapping, and it's a great ride. And then suddenly, you're on top of this huge plunge, and you're looking down, and there's this fear, and you're scared. And Woo, the whole roller coaster goes down and you're screaming. But despite the fact that you're screaming, you're enjoying the ride. There's a thrill attached to it. There's an association that you just know, OK, it's a ride. I'm going to enjoy this ride. It's very similar with the journey of life. To me, it was this quote. I'm sure there have been many times in your life when there have been these incidents which are life changing. In a flash, something happens. And you see a person, or you see people, or you see a situation, or you see relationships very differently. Perhaps you read a book, and that book is life-changing and transformative. Perhaps it's a quote, like in my case. So what changes? Your perspective changes. And when your perspective changes, your attitude changes. And when your attitude changes, your life changes. I'm going to repeat that, because it's important. When your perspective changes, your attitude changes. And when your attitude changes, your life changes. Your life changes forever. You take that backwards. If you are not happy today with where your life is at, if you're unhappy, or if you're happy, or if you're not satisfied where your life is at, it's a result of your attitudes, which in turn are shaped by your perspectives. So what creates your perspectives? It's what's known as your SEER programming. S for social, E for economic, E for experiences, and R for religious. So you are a sum total of your experiences, your social conditioning, your economic conditioning, and your religious conditioning. That becomes your belief system. And it is deeply ingrained within you, and that is where you operate from. That's called your SEER programming. I'll give you an example. So say, for example, you're really, really, really small, and you have a sibling, and your parent says, look at your sibling. They're so good. They're so amazing. Why can't you be like them? And then you think to yourself, I'm not good enough. And then you grow a little bigger, and you go to school. And there, you're not the best kid in class, not the brightest kid in class. And the teacher shouts at you and says, look at the other children. They're doing so well. Shame on you. Buck up. And you say, I'm not good enough. Then you grow a little bigger, and somebody comes into your life that you really like, and you propose to that person, and that person rejects you. And again, you think, I'm not good enough. Then you grow a little bigger, you try to get a job. Either you're rejected for your job, or you get the job, but you don't get the promotion. And again, you say, I'm not good enough. Now, that becomes your core operating belief system. And now, every decision, because it's been amplified that I am not good enough, you will never make a life choice that is actually worthy of you because you don't feel you're good enough. So tomorrow, if a great job opportunity is flashed in the papers, you won't apply for it because you believe you're not good enough. You like a girl, a guy, you, you really want them in your life, but you have no courage to approach them because your operating system is, I am not good enough. 
you have to change your operating system. You have to upgrade your operating system, or you have to completely change your entire software if you want things to be different. Think about it. If you look at your life, do you see the glass, typically, as they say, do you see it half full, or do you see it half empty? Where is your sway? Even that is part of how you're ingrained to think and behave. Do you have a sway to optimism? Do you tend to sway to pessimism? If life throws something difficult your way, do you look at it and say, oh, here's a good challenge. I'm going to come out of it really strong. I'm going to rise to it, and I'm going to make this my building block and watch and how I come out of it. Or do you say, damn it, all these obstacles, and they're in my path, and everyone's trying to come in my way. Do you, when you fall flat on your face, do you turn around and dust yourself and get up and say, try, try, and I'll succeed? Or do you turn around and say, damn it, I always fall down and nobody's beside me. And do you play the victim card over and over and over again? Do you see yourself as a victim? Do you see yourself as a victor? What is your programming? Have you been brought up perhaps in an environment which has constantly been one that is complaining and critical, fault finding more than solution finding? Look around you, look at what you've come into the world with, what has shaped you to being the way you are today. When you blame people, when you blame others, you get so angry. When you blame yourself, you feel so guilty. And when you blame circumstances or blame the stars or blame karma, you feel so helpless. When I talk about deprogram, reprogram, and reinvent, it starts with you. Doesn't matter what has been around you till date, this is your journey at this very moment you will start with accepting responsibility for where you are at today. You have to take full responsibility for all your choices. The clothes you wear were your choice. The car you drive, the home you have, the job you seek, the spouse or partner that you're involved with, these are all your choices. You are nothing but a result of your choices. If you say other people made those choices for me, well, you let those people make that choice for you. That too was a choice to let other people make that choice for you. If you say I'm helpless, that too is a choice. To feel helpless is also a choice. When do you recognize how much power you have? When do you recognize how powerful all of you are? So often I've heard people say, I don't like being around negative people. I keep them far away from me. I only surround myself with positive people. Right? Sounds familiar. The point is, why do you believe that negativity can overpower positivity? Why do you not also believe that your positivity will actually rub off onto that negative person and you can transform a negative person into a positive one? Why do you limit yourself by these ingrained belief systems of what people say and that's just the way it is? One of the most debilitating mindset programs that a lot of people are programmed with and unfortunately, a lot in India are, is what will people think? And our whole lives, we're constantly constructing and deconstructing ourselves based on trying to fit in and trying to think about how other people will view us and therefore how we should lead our lives. When I was about seven or eight years old, my mother, who was extremely bohemian and she was a classical respected Indian dancer, she decided, in a show of protest, to be a rebel. She streaked across Juhu Beach, and of course, there was paparazzi. And I went to school, and my friend said, my mummy said, your mummy is so shocking. So I went home and I said, mom, you have to stop doing whatever you're doing because you're so shocking. And she looked at me, she says, really? Well, can you describe shocking? And I said, you know, shocking, you're so shocking. And she said, that's not a description. Let me describe the world shocking to you. She said, there's a woman in a fundamentalist regime. And that woman gets flogged for showing a bit of her wrist. That woman will look at a woman in India, in a parda, and say, God, when she cooks or when she's out there, her wrist shows. That's so shocking. The woman in a parda says, what nonsense, how dare you call me shocking, my face is covered. Shocking is the woman who's uncovered her face and shows her face to everybody. That is shocking. The woman who's uncovered says, excuse me, at least I have my Sanskriti and Sabhyata, 
I'm at least wearing Indian clothes. What I think is shocking are those women out there who wear jeans. It's not our culture to wear jeans. That's so shocking. The woman in jeans says, hello, excuse me, I'm fully clothed. Thank you very much. Shocking is the girl in the mini skirt. She's showing her legs. The girl in the mini skirt says, excuse me, I'm not shocking. At least I've covered myself till here. Shocking is the girl in the bikini. The girl in the bikini turns around and says, excuse me, I have covered my private parts. I'm not shocking. Pratima baby streak naked on the beach, she's shocking. She thought didn't wear anything at all. And my mom says, and so darling, it's come right back to me. What do I think is shocking? I think that woman in the fundamentalist regime who cannot show a bit of her wrist without being flogged for it, I think that is shocking. She says, everything comes a full circle. And constantly in life, we're living in judgment of other people and pointing fingers and pointing fingers and pointing fingers. And all you're doing is going round and round and round in circles, trying to please people, constructing yourself, deconstructing yourself, trying to fit in. And it's never good enough because everybody's got a finger to point. So what do you do? You move forward. You do your thing. If you're not breaking the law or hurting anybody, you just go out there and do your thing. When I was in my teenage years, when I was in my teenage years, I was the wild rebel child as per societal standards because I wore mini skirts and bikinis and because I was drinking alcohol and I had boyfriends and I had no deadlines at night and all these mothers would caution their daughters about spending too much time with me, you know, sort of bachke rana, sort of talk to the other girls who were more conventional, etc., etc. Today, I have an award-winning column in the leading newspaper of this country. I have these incredible workshops. I represent the strong, emancipated woman of this country today. And I have all these women coming up to me, all walks of life, coming up to me and saying, I want my daughter to be just like you. And I laugh because I'm still that same person. I still wear my mini skirts and bikinis, and I still drink, and I still don't have deadlines. I'm the same person. Society changes, the acceptance changes, what you do suddenly appeals to them. They negate everything else. You just continue forward and do your own thing. Just go out there and do what you believe in and carry on undeterred. Because at some point you will be loved and adored for simply being who you are because you had such conviction in being yourself. When you start deprogramming, when you start breaking these boundaries, when you start challenging things, you turn around and say, if I can do it for myself, I need to make my environment around me conducive to that too. It will enable my process. So what you do is simultaneously, you start helping other people. I remember my cousin's sister came home crying one day because she had a really dark complexion, born to a South Indian father, and she said, she came to my mom and she said, you know, everyone teases me so much in school all the time, and they make fun of my complexion and call me blackie and all kinds of things, and she was really, really crying, very young. And, uh, of course, relatives were sitting around and everybody had an opinion. Some of them said, oh, just ignore it. It doesn't matter. There's nothing you can do about it. Somebody said, use bleach. You know, there are all these solutions coming up. And my mom just looked at her and said, my darling, she said, do you realize that if there's a white spot on a person's skin, it's called a disease. And if there's a black spot on someone's face, it's called a beauty spot. It's just a question of perspective. But that changed so much for my cousin's sister. From that day onwards, anyone who came up to her and made an unkind comment about the color of her skin, she just shot that quote back to them and walked out with her attitude and her head held high because she felt so goddamn good about it. That's the power of a quote. That's the, that's the power of a single perspective that just changes and everything changes in your life just based on that moment. When you talk about quantum physics versus Newtonian physics, Newtonian physics says your matter. Quantum physics says if you break down that matter down to molecules and electrons and protons and neutrons and you open that up, all you see are energy waves. So you are nothing but encapsulated energy waves vibrating. And the common thing is what you vibrate at is what you attract. What you vibrate at is what you attract. And it's true because when your frequency matches a certain frequency, that's all you keep bringing into your life. And you have to constantly go out there and vibrate with the frequency you want to vibrate at to enable and attract the future that you all want for yourselves. You can, at this moment today, sit down and say, I am a product of my past, my fear programming, 
my social economic experiences, my religious programming has taught me to be scared, to be frightened, not to speak up, not to do this, not to do that. The knots are so plenty in all these programmings. You can turn around and say, I am a product of my past. Or you can turn around and say, I want to be this person in the future. And you visualize what you want for your future. You visualize exactly down to the last detail, the life, the perfect life that you visualize for yourself 30 years down the line, 40 years down the line. This is who I want to be and where I want to be at. And every action you take today, every single thought, every single action that you take today is because of the future and not because of the past. You can operate from your past or you can operate from your future. You can be a victim, if you choose to call it, of your past, or you can enable that change by simply wanting to be that person that you see yourself being in the future. When each of you goes back home today, I urge you to look closely at the programs that are limiting you. Deconstruct yourself. What are the don'ts versus the do's? What are your fears? What are your limitations? There are so many modalities out there from hypnosis to NLP and various modalities out there to help you deprogram yourself. Use them. Go out there, everybody, and be the most empowered version of yourself simply because you can. Thank you. Thank you.